Hi, and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm gonna answer a question that I've been asked quite a few times, and I suppose it's a valid question. It's, why did I choose a Mazda Bongo? So uh, I'm gonna kind of put out my things I like about the Bongo and the things that I dislike about the Bongo, because with all vans, there's gonna be something you like and something you don't like. So, uh, and all vans are different. They're all so, so vastly different. There's so many of them, and they're all different sizes and shapes and, you know, they all do different things. And uh, so why would I personally choose a Mazda Bongo? Um, so I'm gonna go with the dislikes first and then we'll end on the positives. Um, so the first thing that I don't like is the fact that you can't walk between the seats into the back of the van because the engine is a mid-engine van. So the engine is actually under the seat. So you have a center console that you can't walk past. I mean, you, if you're like an acrobat, you could probably cartwheel across it, but I can't. Um, so yeah, that's one of the, that's my main gripe about the van, to be honest with you. So everything else is a bit nitpicky, but this one is a bit of a, a bit of a major gripe. It's not being able to walk through the seats to the back. Um, so having the engine under the seats, you have to kind of unclick everything and fold the seats back, which obviously if you have a conversion, that gets a bit more difficult. And it is a bit of a pain. It's not just a simple click the bonnet and have a look inside. It's, you have to move the seats back to it just to check the oil and uh, do all your maintenance work on the engine. It's not too bad, but it's just, again, it's just a little thing. Um, so yeah, so that's another one. So engine access, not so great. Another one, um, size. Now this one is quite debatable. It's really down to personal preference. Um, this is also in the likes column, so it's a bit of a contentious one because yeah, it is small. And if, you, if you've got like a family of say four or more, it, it tends to be quite small. So you've got to be quite careful with how you, uh, you, know, you organize the van. Um, which is why I've been through three different conversions. Um, if you see my van tour layout. Um, but obviously you can solve that quite easily by having a massive awning. So you can just put a, you know, put your awning on the back of the van and then when you get to a campsite, you blow that thing up and uh, you've got a massive awning. So you can solve that issue as well. So um, not too bad, but I like the size, but we'll get onto, onto the likes. But for now, the size, yeah, it is kind of small, but I like it, so it works that way. Um, overheating on earlier models, so the coolant system, um, it's a bit, it's, you know, people have a lot of issues with a coolant system sometimes. If it's properly maintained, there should be no issues at all. You know, you hear people that go 250,000 miles, 500,000 miles in these vans, and they have no problems because they've maintained the coolant system pretty well. And, you know, they go to maybe a Bongo specialist garage to get it bled because that is the biggest issue with the bleed is the bleeding of the coolant system. This is mainly on the diesels. Um, on the petrol, this two litre Bongo, the petrol one, it doesn't have the same problem. So you can actually, you can have a leak um, and it doesn't matter too much because you can fill it back up. You can repair the leak, fill it back up and it will self bleed the engine. So it's actually pretty easy to do. To do. I've actually done it before. I've had a leak. Uh, but a coolant leak from the rear heater matrix and it's all flooded out and uh, absolute pain in the bum but I fixed it very quickly and then topped it back up with coolant and the whole thing just self bled itself it was really easy to do um, it may be an, something I'll do in a future video but the diesels the earlier diesel models are a bit more involved but there is kits now that you can actually put on to help self bleed so that's something worth looking at maybe that's something we'll look at again in, a, in another video now what's next so being a, a great import vehicle, so all bongos are imported. There's not, they're not native to this country. You have to get them from Japan. Um, so they are grey imports. So you do have some struggles with insurance. Um, we've also obviously been able to insure it. It's not actually been that much of an issue, but it can be because it's not as recognised as something that's made in this country or registered in this country. So um, yeah, so just grey imports are a bit of a problem. So it, and being a grey import, and uh, you know, parts can sometimes be a bit tricky to find, maybe a bit expensive in some on, for some parts, but generally I've not found that I've not been able to get a part yet, but um, whether that'll change in the future, I don't know. So parts, that's not something I particularly like hunting around. Um, miles per gallon for me with the LPG, um, it's fine, but most people kind of getting around 30 or less miles per gallon. So some people find it a bit, they're a bit thirsty, especially for driving around towns. Um, so day vehicles, then you know they are they are a bit thirsty, but you get what you get. It's a big vehicle, very heavy, so you know swings and roundabouts for that one really. Um, rust, whoa, rust, rusty vans. So all bongos, 
from Japan, they are they don't do any undersealing because they don't put salts on their road. They don't put any salt on their roads in Japan. So um, when they come to this country, we obviously chuck a ton of salt on the road and the damn things rust to high heaven. So if they're not being undersealed properly when they come off the boat, uh, they tend to have a bit of a, a rust issue underneath. And the arches at the back, they all go. There's, I don't think I've seen one where the arches haven't gone. So they I mean, mine are going now again. I mean, it's, uh, it's something I'm going to have to sort out. Again, we'll look at that in a future video. But yeah, rust can be an issue. So that's something I don't like about these bongos is the rust issue. But it's always there. So you've got to be careful if you're buying a bongo, always check underneath, take your magnet and see if it's uh, being filled. Um, and uh, one thing they don't do now is they don't make any new bongos. So bit of a pain that really. It'd be nice if they still built the bongo. It'd be amazing. I'm pretty sure they'd sell millions of them in this country. So yeah, when the factory burnt down, because it burnt down in, I don't know, 2005, 2006, something like that, they'd stop producing the bongo completely and that's it. No more bongos, pretty sad really. Sad times. So that's literally my entire sort of dislikes. So we'll get on to the good stuff, the things that I do like, because this does far outweigh the dislikes, can I just say? Because um, I still got, I've been, own, I've owned a bongo for five years. Um, so I'm going to address the first one, which is size. I know it was on my dislikes, but I love the size of a bongo. So the fact that I use this every day, um, the fact it will park anywhere in a standard parking spot is genius to me. I think the Japanese got it absolutely spot on. Um, it's like a little TARDIS. You kind of, you come out, it's tiny outside, you get inside, lay all the seats out and you've got a proper camper van. It's like, it does work exactly as you think it's going to do. Um, yeah, it's tight on space inside, but you've got, if you use it correctly and you kind of design your conversion correctly for your family, then uh, you can have no troubles really. It's really good. Like I say, you can put an awning outside, expand the space. It's got a pop top. Um, some of them are tin top, so you know, that's something extra, but yeah, with a pop top, you just, you know, you have got room for four people. Yeah, but it's something you've got to work with. So yeah, love the size of the bongo, total plus for me. Um, electric blinds, those are amazing. You just zippity doo da and uh, your blinds are, are done. So um, it's something I might do in a future video is make blackout blinds for those, uh, for the actual electric blinds, but they're amazing. Factory fitted, they look amazing, they work great, so electric blinds fantastic um, automatic gearbox now it's so smooth to drive the bongos are really really nice uh, it's just my favorite vehicle ever to drive just so easy love automatics anyway so um, yeah this has been absolutely an absolute treat to drive so no complaints with that um, a great driving position you're really high up as you can see over hedges and things like that so it's a really really nice driving position so yeah Love, love to go anywhere. That's why it's so good for a camper because when you're touring around, it feels like you know, it's just part of the, the holidays driving the bonker because it's such good fun, to be honest with you. Um, and uh, I think uh, this is something people always go on about price. Now, price is obviously a great thing to like about a lot of bongos, but they are going up in price now. So um, I'm not sure they're at as good a value as they used to be. But um, I think more importantly, I think the look of a bongo is fantastic. I think they look really good. So one other thing about the uh, the look of a bongo is the uh, factory fitted windows. So it has windows all over, so it, it looks like a camper straight off. So it's not a panel van, which is what a lot of the other campers actually start life as. Um, so I think that really adds to the look of a bongo. Um, I, I like other camper vans, can I say? I love VWs, I've no issue with any of them, so, but I do love the look of a bongo. I think for a small van, it just, they've got the styling spot on, looks really good, so thumbs up for the styling. Um, the soft closed door, uh, obviously a lot of other vans like the VWs tend to have just, you slam them shut and my, my God, they're loud. It's like closing a hangar door, they're unreal. But these, you can just, So soft closed door, amazing. And obviously it has electric windows all around as well. So that's, that's a really good extra. And really a bongo, because they're, they're grey imports, they're not as common. So it's something a bit unique. It's a bit funky. I think that's what I quite like about it as well. You know, it's a really great club. Uh, they got the Mazda Bongo Owners Club on Facebook and obviously Bongo Fury. And Bongo Fury do a meet every year and you get to see all the bongos in all their glory, all loads of different colours, it's great fun. So it's a really good community that goes with the bongo. They're really friendly, so good. So 
totally recommend going to the Facebook group so and joining uh, Bongo Fury so really really good group there so I mean for me it's like why choose a Mazda Bongo it's because of all those likes those reasons as soon as I saw it I love the look of it drives well does everything I want it to do so um, yeah an absolutely brilliant little van and um, I would choose it again if I had to if I had a choice I'd be like yeah I'd, I'd, I'd be quite sad if I had to sell the bongo and get something a bit bigger um, but I'm hoping I'll always be able to keep it and if I want another van a bigger van I'll buy a bigger van as well so I can just keep using the bongo so it's just one of them great little vans so um, yeah there we go that's my reasons and yeah I absolutely love the bongo so there we go thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.